Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. A total of 24 drivers have come from the hills of Switzerland and it is time to decide who the best 10 Swiss Formula 1 drivers are. We haven't had a Swiss driver on the grid for over a decade, but there are plenty of very talented drivers from the neutral nation. But just the 14 drivers who don't make the cut. Jean-Claude Rudaz never started. Neither did carmaker Peter Monteverdi. Joe von Laufen failed to finish for the original Williams in 1975, whilst Rudolf Schuller retired in his Ecuri Espadon Ferrari in 1952. Heinz Schiller also failed to finish in his single appearance for Ecuri Filippinetti. I've already covered Heine Walter and why he doesn't make the top 10. Albert Scherer made one appearance in an Alta in 1953. Max Deterra had a couple of goes in 1952 and 1953, but also doesn't make this list. Michael May had a couple of races in 1961 for Scuderia Colonia. Ottorino Volontario raced a Maserati in the mid 50s to little success. Tony Branca made his debut in 1950, but only made two other appearances. Franco Farini never finished for a seller. Jean-Denis Delatraz had no luck with either LaRousse or the Pacific team, whilst Andrea Chiesa only qualified for three races with the hopeless Fond Metal team in 1992. So, with those 14 drivers eliminated from the list already, let's move on to the best 10 Formula 1 drivers from Switzerland. Number 10, Loris Kessel. You may recognise the Kessel name from the world of endurance racing. The Kessel Racing Team exists to this day in the European Le Mans series. That was all started by this man, Loris Kessel. He did not have an incredible motor racing career, but he did get a few outings in Formula 1. He'd take part in five Grand Prix in 1976 with the Ram team, but with a couple of did not qualifies and a retirement in Sweden, the best he could do was 12th in the Belgian Grand Prix. Undeterred but without a drive, he brought an old Williams car from Frank Williams, and with the Jolly Club of Switzerland, famous for rallying and touring cars but not single seaters, he created the Apollon Fly, a good looking car that only took part in qualifying at the Italian Grand Prix in 1977. It failed to get in the race and never appeared again. Kessel would focus on GT racing over the coming years, having a couple of goes at Le Mans and racing with his Kessel racing team until 2008 before sadly passing away in 2010. Kessel racing is now run by his son and is still going strong. Number 9, Gregor Foytek. The very short racing career of Gregor Foytek was very unsuccessful in terms of results. He did win the 1986 Swiss Formula 3 Championship and took a race win in the International Formula 3000 Championship in 1988. Despite never finishing higher than 7th in the Formula 1 feeder series, he got drive in Formula 1, spending the majority of 1989 with the Eurobrun team but never getting out of pre-qualifying. He left Eurobruns and took a single race with Real in Spain, where his rear ring fell off at high speed and Foytek again failed to qualify and immediately left the team. In 1990, he returned with the Brabham team and got to start a couple of races, retiring from both. He then joined the Onyx team and got his best results at Monaco with 7th. He was 6th, but Eric Bernard passed him in the late stages and forced him into the wall. He had a few more races without success, as well as racing in sports cars, and even a couple of appearances in IndyCar with AJ Foyt, before seemingly retiring. Number 8, Peter Hurt. A wealthy Swiss businessman, Peter Hurt was not a full-time race driver, but despite this made his Formula 1 debut in the Swiss Grand Prix in 1951, in a self-entered Veritas Meteor. In 1952, he raced for Ecuri Espadon, owned by Rudy Fischer, but funded by a few people, including Peter Hurt. He got his best result with a 7th in the Swiss Grand Prix, as well as 11th in the French Grand Prix. He made one more appearance in the Swiss Grand Prix of 1953, and didn't make any notable appearances in motorsport after that. Number 7, Silvio Moza. After a successful stint in sports cars and junior formula, Silvio Moser attempted to make his debut in 1966 in a self-entered Brabham, but the engine failed in practice. He returned at the British Grand Prix in 1967, racing for the Vogel team, but retired from the race. In 1968 in a Vogel Brabham, he scored his first points for a fifth place in the Dutch Grand Prix, but failed to qualify twice and wasn't classified in Britain. 
He'd score another point in 1969 before making a bold move and commissioning his own chassis from Italian company Balazzi, racing under his own team name, as well as the Jolly Club of Switzerland. He failed to qualify four times and only got out to race twice, retiring from both. Sadly, after Formula 1, Moses' career was very short. He passed away after a sports car crash at Monza in 1974. Number 6, Tullo de Graffenreid. Baron Emmanuel Tullo de Graffenreid made his first appearance pre-war, but made his Formula 1 debut at the very first race in 1950. Having won the British Grand Prix in 1949, he raced for Enrico Platz in a Maserati and finished 6th twice. Only the top 5 got points in 1950. In 1951, he raced for Alfa Romeo at the Swiss Grand Prix and took his first points before returning to race for Enrico Platz for the rest of the year. He'd have his best year in 1953, scoring 5th in the Dutch Grand Prix before entering his own Maserati and getting 4th in Belgium and 5th at Germany. He'd make a couple more appearances in 1954 and returned for a single race in 1956 for Scuderia Centra Sud, but retired from racing. He was the last surviving driver of the original Formula 1 Grand Prix, dying in 2007 at the age of 92. Number 5, Rudy Fischer. We mentioned Rudy Fischer and his Acuri Espadon team previously before, but we didn't mention how good Rudy Fischer actually was. He made his debut in 1951 at the Swiss Grand Prix, but only made a couple of appearances that year. In 1952, he took second place in the Swiss Grand Prix behind Piero Taruffi, the only other driver on the lead lap. Whilst he didn't start the French Grand Prix and only managed 13th in the British, he did get one more podium in the German Grand Prix. Those two podiums were good enough for fourth in the championship. After retiring from the Italian Grand Prix, Rudy Fischer retired from motor racing and Akiri Espadon disappeared from Grand Prix racing. Number four, Sebastian Buemi. The most recent Swiss driver in Formula One, Sebastian Buemi is also the only driver on this list from the modern era of Formula One. Sebastian Buemi, it could be argued, didn't have the career in Formula One that he should have. Racing for Toro Rosso for three years between 2009 and 2011, Buemi only ever scored a smattering of points here and there each and every season, and only finished 15th and 16th in the championship. But there were very good performances, and Buemi's career really took off after Formula 1. Linking up with Toyota in the World Endurance Championship, he has taken over 20 victories in the WEC, as well as 4 wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Along with this, he is a Formula E champion, and to this day, no one has won more Formula E races than Sebastian Buemi. He's even been linked to a return to Formula 1 at various times in his career, but for now, Sebastian Buemi continues to race in both the WEC and Formula E. Number 3, Mark Sura. Another who you could argue was never given a fair chance in Formula 1, Mark Sura certainly did plenty to warrant a chance from one of Formula 1's top teams. The 1979 European Formula 2 champion made his Formula 1 debut that same year with the Ensign team. He only qualified once in three attempts at the season finale in America, but an engine ended his race after lap 32. He raced for the German ATS team in 1980 and finished 7th in Brazil before breaking both his legs in practice at South Africa. He returned later in the year but scored no points. He got his first Formula 1 points of a return to Ensign at the 1981 Brazilian Grand Prix, a brilliant 4th and a fastest lap in an Ensign, like winning the Grand National whilst riding a washing machine. Mark Sura scored another point at Monaco before leaving Ensign for Theodore Racing, but he did not score any more points in 1981 and joined Arrows for 1982. Over the next three years, he would score the odd points for the team, but never really broke into the midfield. In 1985, he got a drive with Brabham thanks to his ties with BMW, who were powering Brabham at the time. He'd match his best ever finish with fourth in the Italian Grand Prix, but would retire halfway through 1986 after a rallying crash injured Mark Sura and killed friend and co-driver Michael Wider. He would compete sporadically by his heroics for small Formula 1 teams in the early to mid 80s earned him third place on this list. Number 2, Joe Siffert. One of only two Swiss drivers to taste Formula 1 victory, Joe Siffert had a long career from the early 60s into the 70s. Starting in 1962 with an Acuri Filippinetti Lotus, it was in 1963 in a self-entered Lotus where he took his first points. After a single point in 1963 and three points from a fourth in Germany in 1964, Joe Siffert switched to the Rob Walker Racing Team and on his first start for the team he finished third at Watkins Glen. Over the next few years, Joe Siffert scored the odd points finished with Rob Walker, 
but did not get another podium until 1968 when he took his first Formula 1 win in the British Grand Prix. This was the final win the Rob Walker team would get in Formula 1. Joe Siffert's final year with Rob Walker saw two more podiums in Monaco and the Netherlands, but a lot of retirements meant only a ninth overall in the 1969 championship. Siffert moved to the March team in 1970, but the year was a disaster and he scored no points, switching to BRM in 1971. Joe Siffert would have his best year, winning in Austria, a podium in America and two other points finishes, which was good enough for fifth in the championship. Sadly, he'd never get a chance to do better than this. Joe Siffert was killed in a non-championship race at Brands Hatch. He got a couple of class wins at Le Mans during his career also, and was an all-round class driver. Number one, Clay Regazzoni. And finally, we have Clay Regazzoni, who we have talked about a number of times on this channel before. The 1970 European Formula 2 champion was thrown straight into the deep end with Ferrari in the same year, winning in Italy and finishing third in the championship despite missing five races. Ferrari dropped off the pace over the next couple of years and Regazzoni would have to settle for a handful of podiums before switching to the BRM team in 1973. He only scored two points as BRM were edging ever closer to their death. He returned to the warm, comforting embrace of Ferrari in 1974. He won in Germany and ended the year second in the championship, only three points off Emerson Fittipaldi's McLaren. Regazzoni would take a single win in both 1975 and 1976 before leaving Ferrari for the final time and joining Ensign for 1977 and then Shadow for 1978, both without any real success. In 1979 he had a single year with the Williams team, would take his final but Williams first Formula 1 win at the British Grand Prix and left to rejoin Ensign at the end of the year. Four races into the 1980 season, he had a big crash at Long Beach and was paralysed from the waist down. He retired from Formula 1 but for years after continued competing in Dakar rallies and various other events, paving the way for disabled drivers to be accepted in motorsport. He sadly passed away in 2006. So that was the list of the best 10 Swiss Formula 1 drivers. Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more motorsport content, lots of good stuff as we head to the end of 2022. And leave a like and tell your friends, thank you for watching and have a good one.